This is an example of calculating the hydrostatic force on a semicircular gate. So this is a, a plane surface, a flat gate. And the problem reads, a semicircular gate is held closed by force Fg. You can see it here. Applied 0 0.6 meters from the top edge of the gate. Uh, the gate is hinged along the upper straight edge. So now, one of the problems that students have with these pro with these types of problems is visualizing this. So what you're seeing in uh, where you're seeing the uh, semicircle is a a plan view of that semicircle. So this edge here is actually where the hinge is, and, and, and it's actually a horizontal surface. So you got to imagine it sort of rotated in space. What we're asked to calculate here is the minimum force, applied force Fg, necessary to keep the gate closed against the hydrostatic force of the water. So there are two steps to this problem. One is first to find the magnitude of the hydrostatic force. So one, find F, where F is the normal to the gate, the hydrostatic force of the water. And step two, we define the location, which in our analysis we've called YCP. What we need to find is the location of this force relative to the center of gravity of the gate. And then step three, what we're going to do is apply simple statics. I'm going to take the sum of the moments about the hinge and set them equal to zero. And that'll give us a nice equation. It's very uh, simple statics to get the, the force F. So starting with step one, we have, and in this case, we can assume that the, the atmospheric pressure here acts on both sides. So we can use the gauge pressure uh, variance of these equations. And so the, the force on the, the gate is strictly due to the, the weight of the water, which we showed was the gamma of the water, the height of the center of gravity or the center of area of the gate and the times the area of the gate. So we might as well start with something easy. Let's first calculate the area of the gate, which is, it's a half a circle. So pi r squared divided by two. So pi, you can see that the gate has a radius of 1.2 meters. And that works out to 2.262 meters squared. Now next, let's go after the height of the centroid. Now, if you look in your textbook, in figure 2.13, you'll find a diagram of a semicircle, and it shows you where the centroid is relative to this, this edge and the uh, y location of the centroid is 4 r upon 3 pi. Now we've got to remember that this is not in the vertical direction, this is actually uh, in the direction uh, parallel to the gate, which we previously gave the symbol, uh, the coordinate z. So delta z here, the distance from this upper edge to the centroid, which is 4 r upon 3 pi, so 4 times 1.2 meters divided by 3 pi, works out to 0 0.5093 meters. Now we need to add that a correcting for the angle to the one and a half meters that the hinge is from the free surface. So let me just scroll, start a new page and scroll so we can see this. So what we have now here is, is the distance from the centroid here 
delta z, and we have to take the uh, sine of 45 degrees times that distance and add it on to one and a half meters to get the distance of the centroid or the depth of the centroid. So the h of the center of gravity equals one and a half meters plus this distance from the hinge to the centroid sine 45 degrees. So 1.5 meters plus 0 0.5093 meters sine 45 degrees. 1.860 meters. Now we can calculate the force. We have everything necessary. The resultant force is using gamma h c gamma h times the center of gravity times a. I'm going to use for water for fresh water a round number of 98. 100 newtons per cubic meter. The depth of the centroid is 1.860 meters. And the area of the gate we calculated up here, which is 2.262 meters squared. And that works out to 41.23 kilonewtons. So that's the force. That's this force F here. And now we need to find its location. So next, the location of F. And previously we derived that the center of pressure, so that's the place where the force acts, relative to the center of gravity is minus the second moment of area about the centroid sine theta upon the height of the center of gravity of the gate times area. And this negative sign here is because it this is the distance below the center of gravity. So below the centroid of the gate, that's why the negative sign there. And of course, in this case, the gate is symmetrical about the vertical axis. So uh, x uh, center of pressure equals zero. So and we'll just make a little the fact that it's symmetrical. And I'll scroll up here and what that means. So that means that the force acts along this line, this center line of the gate, uh, because it's symmetrical about the uh, vertical axis. Carrying on, we need to get the second moment of area about the centroid. And if you check in your textbook, it's listed as 0 0.1098 times the radius to the fourth, and that comes from table 2.13 in your textbook. And we covered it also in the slides. So the second moment of area of the gate about the centroid is then 0 0.1098, and the radius of the gate is 1.2 meters. So that works out to 0 0.2277 meters to the fourth. Now we already know the other things in the equation for getting the y location of the center of, center of pressure. We know the height of the uh, we know the height of the centroid. We know the area of the gate, and we know the angle is 45 degrees. So we can now calculate uh, YCP. Let me just start a new page and scroll. So YCP, the location of the center of pressure, 
is minus 0 0.2277 meters to the fourth. Oops, let me scroll so you can see if you can see that equation that we're working with. Okay, we're working with the equation at the top here. So that's the second moment of area times the sine of 45 degrees over the height of the centroid, which we calculated previously was 1.860 meters, and the area of the gate, which was, of course, pi r squared divided by 2, which works out to be 2.262 meters squared. And that gives minus 0 0.0383 meters. So we know that it acts, it acts about 3.8 centimeters below the center of gravity. So now we can do the last part. We'll just draw a free body diagram of the uh, gate and we'll do the sum of the moments to get that force. So here's my free body diagram. So FBD of the gate. So we just draw the gate totally isolated and just put the forces on it. So here's our gate at, at 45 degrees. There's the hinge. We have some horizontal force. We have some vertical force. And since we, we really don't want to resolve those forces, we're going to take moments about that point, the hinge, so that we don't have to deal with those. Uh, we have our hydrostatic force that we know, and now we know that it acts. Remember the center of gravity here was, the center of gravity was four r upon three pi, and now we've just calculated this distance here, that it acts uh, this, this force, the hydrostatic force, acts below this your 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 uh, centroid for the gate. It acts below that by a distance of 3.83 centimeters. And the force that's closing the gate here, Fg, uh, acts at this distance, which is 0 0.6 meters. So now we can take the sum of the moments about the hinge, where of course this is the hinge here. And so we have F, our hydrostatic force, which we know, times minus Y center of pressure, that 3.83 uh, centimeters, plus 4R on 3 pi that we already calculated has got to balance f g times 0 0.6 and so you end up with for f we had 41.23 kilonewtons and now these distances uh, ycp negative of ycp is going to be 0 0.038 three meters. We previously calculated this 4r upon 3 pi as being 0 0.5093 meters and that's got to equal this minimum gate force times 0 0.6. Maybe do the arithmetic from here. It gives Fg equals to 41.5 Two, three kilonewtons times 0 0.548 meters over 0 0.6 meters and you get 37.6 kilonewtons and I always round my answers to three digits because it's very rare that you would know things more accurately than that. It's really unprofessional if you uh, show things to like you know, large numbers of digits. So get in the habit of rounding your final answers to three significant digits, unless you have a compelling reason to do otherwise. And that's the answer.